I was born in Mexico City, but I was raised in Texas, in Bronzeville, because my parents divorced when I was young, so, and my father remarried a woman from Texas, and we lived with her since I was like 14. I knew I was gay and right. an artist. Right. And in Texas, there's just, just so little you can do. Like, I was working with my family, and uh, my dad was very like controlling, and we have to work with him. And I said, no, I want to do art, and he wouldn't support the arts. He was like, no, you have to work with my business, and that way we'll have money. And I was like, no, I, I, this is not what I want to do. And we are nine kids, so all of them can work with him, but I was the rebel one. It was really hard, because I have to pretend that I like girls. And my sister would hook me up with all her, all her friends, and I was, oh my God. So they were really cute girls, but luckily they were Catholic girls. And Catholic girls want to wait till they get married, till they pop the cherry. So I was okay, we'll wait till we get married. <laughs> but you know what? I end up enjoying their company too. I was like, I always appreciate as an artist, I appreciate woman's and man's beauty. But I knew I always loved man because I would get so turned on with a guy. I could kiss a girl and stuff, and, and I would get attached to the girls that I was dating. But they didn't attract me sexually, but I will appreciate their company and I thought they were beautiful. I appreciate always like their their beauty, I mean, but man always like right away I get turned on. So it was it was hard. It was like a double life. So I will go out with a girl and hold her hand and kiss her and then in the night I will go to the gay club and look for a boy. So it was it was hard. It was, it was exciting, but it was very hard to have to keep that inside of me all the time. I think what made me like take the decision and just leave, um, I turned HIV positive. They knew when I ran away from home. I mean, when I was 25, after one year of, of I, I turned HIV positive, I started saving money and I said, I'm going to run away and do my thing in, oh, wow. in 96. And I said, you know what? Back then, they gave five years to live. So I say, I have five years, I'm just gonna do my thing. And uh, I just run away. I went first to San Francisco, but I was in Croatia, but I liked it. Then I went to Chicago, and it was okay, but I knew I was gonna end up in New York. And I said, you know what, I mean, I said, I don't know how much I'm gonna live, I'm just gonna do my thing. And I like transform myself. I started getting tattoos and piercings, and taking more photos and just being free. And luckily when I get to New York, I met this guy and he told me, no, go take care of yourself. There's this clinic and, and the medications are getting better and better and better. So now you can live forever. I mean, I, I never been sick. I'm undetectable, I'm super healthy. And I've been really lucky. I mean, I go to a good doctor, good medication. So it was very good that I took care of myself. And one of my best friends, um, she's the one that told him, she said, well, because they were like interrogating all my friends, like, where is he at? And they said, oh, well, he's gay, he's HIV, and he went to San Francisco. And my parents were like, what? They were like in shock. But I think that they, deep inside they suspected. And it took them a while to warm up, and my dad was super homophobic, and my brothers too. And my mom was a little more understanding, because we were like best friends. Now they're really cool. Like all my brothers, my dad and my mom, I mean, they're all remarried and stuff, but even my stepmom, they're, they're very supportive. When I was 19 years old, my mom was dating a guy, and he was a photographer. So we were kind of broke. So to survive, we did like a model agency, and we would shoot models, and that way we will make a little money out of the shoots. So that's how I get interested in photography and and I love the fashion world and the glamour and taking pictures. Since then I was obsessed with photography. When I got to New York, I didn't know anybody. It was really hard. My first year, I was just like uh, with roommate situations, like sleeping in sofas and stuff like that. But I always carry my camera with me and I will take photos of my tricks or my friends, well, people that I start meeting. And uh, little by little, like, it took me five to six years. I've been here 15 years. It took me like six years to start like get, taking it seriously. 
the photography. I just start little by little. Yeah, I was shooting lots of boys and I was submitting my work to gay magazines because there are like three big gay magazines in New York. And, but I didn't really start getting published until three years ago. I mean, I had tons of photos accumulating and accumulating and accumulating, but I was like, I don't know, my work is not good enough to be in magazines. I was so insecure. And I always like dream of being like in magazines or, or in, I don't know, like in all the media, in papers, in the movies, in, in documentaries. And, and I always, I was, was always on myself short, like, oh no, no, my stuff is not good, I'm not good enough. I was always so insecure. Yeah. But now you know better. Now I know better. <laughs> <laughs> and it's so easy, it's just so easy. I mean, well, it's not that easy. Like, things, things have to happen when you're ready. Like, if everything was easy, anybody would be like super star or super artist. You have to like really work and be persistent and follow your dreams and don't let anybody tell you, oh, your work is horrible. If you like it and you're passionate about it, just keep shooting, keep shooting, keep shooting. And uh, you just have to say, okay, I'm going to have a show tomorrow. I mean, you just have to be persistent. And it's how I start. So, okay, I'm going to have a show. And I, I rent a room somewhere and I have a show and it went great. Then I say, I'm going to publish a book. So I publish a book. Then I say, I'm going to submit work to magazines. And I just want to look for all the magazines or online, like their emails. And I start sending photos to magazines, looking what, depending on the magazine. And yeah, I don't know where like people start loving the work and and like the last three, four years, my career went like rise, like form. And I even end up like in a movie that is coming out this year. Like this year, this month I've been in three magazines. Last year I was like in six or seven magazines. So it's very exciting. I mean, I'm very happy, I'm very proud and I'm not gonna stop, I'm gonna keep doing my thing. My biggest inspiration is people that are free. Like, I love freedom of expression, I love to be different, I like to be edgy, I like to shock people. And I try not to copy people. I get my inspiration for other photographers sometimes, like David LaChapelle is my number one. I like also Mike Ruiz a lot. He's a gay celebrity in New York. And uh, Madonna, the singer, she's inspired me a lot, always. Like since I was a teenager, I listened to all her music and her songs like helped me like through lots of things. So I get muses, like I, I guess sometimes I get infatuated with some of my models. Like this girl, she was my muse for like two years. My ex-lover was my, my muse for two years. So sometimes people inspire me. Uh, sometimes musicians inspire me or other artists inspire me. But I try not to copy because I hate when people copy. I get the concept, but I do my own thing. You know what? Life brings ups and downs. Believe me, when I turn HIV, I, I want to kill myself. And I said, instead of killing myself, I'm going to run away and live live life like if you're not happy where you're at try your best to make a change like move somewhere else or start a hobby or find something new get like an inspiration like it's important to always have goals dreams always no matter how old you get no matter you you i mean you're in a wheelchair always find something to keep your mind busy and keeps you motivated even if it's drawing even if it's writing a book like find something that inspires you. I think this imp that will keep you alive. The movie that's coming out this year, it's coming out this month, you said, right? Yeah. Is there a way for people to go and see it? Yeah, actually, you can buy it in Amazon already. It's called the, the Endless Possibility of Sky. And I'm one of the main actors. And it's funny because I'm not an actor, but two years ago, this, this, this artist, that, this guy that I shot, he's like, he's an actor. And he's like, oh, I'm filming a movie and one of the actors didn't show up. You want to fill in? And back then I had a blue mohawk. So the director loved my look. And I was just going to be in a little extra. 
and he ended up putting me like in five scenes, and I ended up being one of the main guys for the movie. And since then, I have my page at the IMBD, and I did like another two movies and a TV show, and that's, that was like a new career out of nowhere, the acting. I mean, I, I'm a photographer, that's my number one option, but the acting, I was, I was always curious and passionate about it too. So that's a good example, like to find new things that you, you always dream of and you couldn't do, try to find them. Try, find a way to get in.